All right, you guys, today we're at Lane Motor Museum outside of Nashville. We're gonna go check out the vault here. It's the basement. They have 512 cars total and only like 130 on display. So the rest are gonna be in the basement. Let's get into this. Let's check this out. We got our tour in about 12 minutes. So we'll check out some of these cars. We'll go down there, then we'll come back up, finish the tour of the upstairs. You guys remember these are like one-off vehicles very rarely seen and some are restored some are not they are beautiful cars let me know your favorite Nissan Pace Car, Indy Pace Car, so cool. Look at this BW. What? That's awesome. XL1. Definitely would rock that. That is awesome. That is cool. 1929. I don't know who could fit in this thing. That is small. Makes a mini look big. It's a pedal. That's cool. You guys, I forgot to tell you, it's my birthday. So, uh, no place I'd rather be is checking out one off vehicles with you guys. If you like this stuff, please drop a like comment you can comment happy birthday or whatever we got some new stuff coming out this year including some toys probably another electric vehicle or gas maybe but we'll fill you guys in shortly once we pick it up let's get back into this Another Lotus Coupe, 2013. This is the Lotus area. They switch it up every once in a while. They have a 
Fiat area we'll be headed to soon. Let's just continue. Turbo 2. Or no. R5 Turbo 2. 1985 and 83. Very nice. Alright guys, we're about a quarter of what's upstairs. We gotta go ahead to the basement so we don't miss out on the other rare items. Don't forget, please like, comment, subscribe. It means the world to us. We are shooting a lot of content this year. We're trying for once a week, but if not, maybe about twice a week would be ideal. Spin around the, the basement here. We'll just start start here and go that way. We're gonna stay in these yellow lines, if you will. Stick close to me. If you have any questions, please ask. If I have an answer, I'll give it to you. I'll tell you if I don't know too. Which there are a lot of things. There are a lot of cars here, so there's plenty of stuff I don't know. On weekdays, there are two people employed that do uh, oil changes and batteries and you know, pump up tires and just normal maintenance of, of all cars. These cars are queued up to have some work done on them. And then, you know, of course, when they get finished, they get put back out here and then more cars come in. So it's a pretty busy place on the weekdays. Here's the <laughs> that lifts up. Of course, it's got a, a U-joint in the steering column, so the steering raises up with it. These were made on the Isle of Man by a, a company called Peel that made uh, fairings for motor, fiberglass fairings for motorcycles and fiberglass boats and stuff. So these bodies are fiberglass. They thought, you know, we're, we're making the bodies, let's make some cars. So they've introduced about three or four different models of cars over the years, all very small. I don't know the name of this vehicle, but it's pedal driven. It's got, it's got a pedal drive for each side. There's no, gas or electric there's no other motor in it so it's totally propelled by people power wooden wooden frame wooden frame and this this museum has many many micro cars in fact uh, there are 25 more micro cars that belong to the museum that are on loan to a museum that just opened in georgia called the savoy which i haven't been to yet but I understand it's going to be a really nice museum, so we'll all have to go down and visit that place. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what town it's. I think it's in a suburb of Atlanta. Replica of Henry Ford's first automobile, the one that he built in his shop that famously was too big to get out of the shop after he built it, so he had to break the brick doorway out and get it out. It's really the first car story I ever remember, and I've been a car nut since I was a little kid. But what I find most interesting about this is just thinking about this engine, for instance. All of these components came from a hardware store because there weren't auto parts places in the late 1800s. It didn't exist. So everything here came from a hardware store. The pistons are, are plumbing pipe with a cap welded on it. The, the cylinders are more larger diameter plumbing pipe. It even has uh, water jackets for cooling the engine. That's yet a third larger diameter of pipe. And the water just percolates up like a coffee percolator, and goes up into this tank underneath the seat, and then transfers over here as it cools, and then goes back into the engine. Yeah, there's plenty of that stuff. There's some really skilled, skilled metal workers here. I wonder if that came to And you know where else you're gonna see? 
Yes, Citron. Yeah, this for folks who don't know, this double chevron here, that's the, the emblem of Citron. So if you ever see that on these cars, you'll know it's a Citron. And Citron made so many different kinds of cars and often quite strange. You couldn't, you wouldn't have any idea of, of who made the car unless you saw the badge. We'll see some more. Uh, this museum also has the largest collection of Citrons outside of France. There are probably 45 or 50 of them here. This belongs to Jeff Lane's father. Jeff, Jeff Lane was the founder of the museum. And he's still, he's still heavily involved. Has yeah, yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty miraculous here. That took a little while. They're fiber best flying cars. That looks like another Citron there. So once again, here's a, here's a Citron, you can see that? Like that. Is that like a fish tank? Yeah, yeah, so you put the license plate in there, just, just to look elegant, be swoopy and aerodynamic. But they had models of cars yeah. that were this size that had a conventional Citron engine. They were also elegant, but they weren't as pricey and unusual as these. But here, here are the vacuum pots that are for the suspension system. Okay. And you know, Maserati V6, looks like three two-barrel carburetors. It's, it's a really neat car. Here's a uh, 50th anniversary 911. Oh, that's nice. It is a nice car. Yeah. I love this one. Yeah. It's, a, it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a road, this is a rotary-powered rotary NSU. The last car they ever built because they put a serious warranty on the engine when they were introducing, well, the engine ended up being problematic, and they had to replace it. They had multiple engines in thousands of cars, and it bankrupt as you know, unfortunately. This was a grand German company. Yeah, they were also an uh, airplane manufacturer as well. Oh, yeah. I, cars, I think most of you guys have already been upstairs, so you've seen what's up there. They have a million micro cars here. These are among some of them. You may not call a mini a micro car, but it's right, it's right on the edge. This particular one has been modified by a company in Italy called Innocenti. And, uh, so it's a regular Cooper, but it's got the extra fog lamps, some suspension stuff, uh, some go fast parts, and all the gauges are in Italian, which is pretty cool. Anyway. Now this car here, this belonged to George Jones, the country music singer. And he used to drive it around town all the time, I've been, I've been told. When he was getting a divorce from Tammy Wynette, he sold this car to his manager, probably to hide assets. And actually, the same as that little minivan. And they made zillions of these. It was a very popular car. You see this Honda City Turbo? Have you seen one? This is a key car in, in Tokyo, for instance. You can't drive a car that's larger than this. This is probably as large a wheelbase and cars you can drive in Tokyo. But uh, because there's no parking and, the, and skinny yeah. roads and all, and zillions of people. Well, this car you would drive into your office, park it as close as you can drive car. They make these forever. You hear this is a 30, no, this is a 53, that's a 37. Band. They oh, banned it in 85. Race that one. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, if it was earlier, it would have the driver and the specs with it, wouldn't it? Yeah, they never, this one had already, oh. they'd already done that whole process, and this was prepped and ready to go. Well, and then there wasn't, they, they didn't have Group B anymore. They said, well, what are we going to do with them? They made these four cars street legal. So this is one of four street legal Group B rally cars in the world. And it is fast and loud. You know, zero to 60 in 2.6 seconds. It's just, it's brutal. It's a, this is an amazing car. Those cars, all these cars back here at the back wall are for sale, so you can drive one of those home today if you like. Oh, I they have a huge Trabant here. I've always wanted a Trabant of all things. So. <laughs> but the one I really like is that big black top. Oh, that's that is. It's an S, so I don't know if it's an amphibious car. Well, it used to be amphibious. 
before it sank. <laughs> they, they took this out to take some late, some museum members out in it. What's that? We, we got one of these. Now, this little car back here is an Austin 7, that, a two thirds scale replica that was made by a machinist in Tennessee and it runs and drives and everything. It's perfect, perfect proportion. It's a really cool little car. But you know what this car is? the only manual this was made. This was made uh, for the press to drive around when they released the, the smart car for two, and so they put that standard transmission in it. They were going to be slow. Travis is a, is a German company that modifies automobiles, so they've taken this and I've shown these guys culture. And you can put rocks or stone or building materials or heavy tools in it and then go on a horse trail, go up, go up a mountain on a horse trail with it. Because once it, once it gets there, <laughs> this lift is how all the cars get onto the shelves by this. This is the only lift here in the base. It was like these ramps that hook on here that they have a wheel on the bottom. And then when you lower the deck of the lift, it levers those wheels down into the ground. Body in Europe didn't sell it in the United States. There's another time. It's red, I think it was. This little mini Cooper has two engines. An engine in the front and an engine in the back. He's got two shifters too, which I can't figure out. You know, how are you supposed to shift two shifters? And they're front, like you shouldn't see the shifter here, the shifter here. So these would have been made from uh, kits or plans that you get out of like popular mechanics magazines and stuff in the 30s. And they would have been made with a conventional internal combustion engine. But these guys just changed it to the pop line because they wanted to. All right, you guys, that was awesome. We've been here a couple times. That's the first time touring the basement. What's your thoughts? You gonna come check them out? We'll drop all their information below. I would recommend Lane Motor Museum if you're in the Nashville area and you're looking for some odd and wild vehicles. Here we go, the Fiat 500. The history. A walk around of the odd ones you've probably never seen before. That's pretty cool. Eves. Huh, pickup truck. Okay, that's sweet. Not gonna lie. I think I can fit my electric scooter in the back of the head. on 300z 1990 pace car check out that interior all right you 
guys. We're going to the one of one. Oh, that's some milk. Don't know what to think of that one. These are cool. Somebody had an idea. It was creative. And built, so. Oh, my world. No, no. That's wild. Look at those tail lights. That's cool. This looks cool. Let's probably go through some mud, some off roading right here. It's that Citron. Citron. See the V? That's what that means. All right, you guys, Hot Wheels Toolbox. Let's check out the cockpit. Now let's go check out the 2019 Hot Wheels Toolbox. That's cool. That's where you're looking how to... Definitely put all your tools in there. Very cool. Like a bubble. Oh, so good. These are cool ski boats. Snowhawk. Craft. What? Okay, that looks dangerous. Try to pull up some videos of this. 1964 Ski Craft. Good luck, dude. You guys, what'd you think? Wayne Motor Museum, definitely check it out. Hope you guys stayed to the end. If you did, please consider joining and subscribing. We do a lot around Nashville. We cover a lot of car shows. We'll be back soon. Check out a video on the left and right you might like. See you next time. Keep exploring.